Okay, so uh, my, my computer says it's 3 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started on uh, class. My name is Kay Judd, and I am teaching the design class for the online tatting class. And our topic today is uh, we're still covering the principles of design. Uh, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about proportions. And because we need to repeat something else in order to uh, have proportion, uh, I'm including harmony, uh, which includes uh, rhythm and repetition. So let me switch over here to the camera. And then in the in the news this week was the case of the shrinking carters. And what happened when President and Dr. Bar Dr. Biden were in Georgia, they stopped to visit with the Carters and had a photo up. And the photographer used a super wide angle lens that flattened out the photo. And it made the Carters look much smaller than the Bidens. Well, we are studying proportion. And, and so in order to put emphasis on, on uh, something, we a lot of times the artists would make, make it a lot larger. And so since our current president is President Biden, uh, he had to be much larger, I suppose, so. Uh, using proportion can attract attention to the subject of the piece. So let me flip back over here. So how many of you are have seen in person a version of Mike Lyon's doily called Lightnap? Uh, it's very large. It draws the eyes to it first. That is proportion. So if you're tatting a large piece and you want to bring attention to a certain area, by tatting that area larger and surrounding it with smaller supporting elements, you have used proportion to emphasize that one area. My client's lag nap shows us really well. The design consists of large motifs that are repeated, supported by smaller repeated motifs, and they're all joined together by a large undulating path. That undulating path would be the focal point, I would say, for the design. It grabs the viewer's eyes and leads it towards the center of the doily and then back out to the outside edge, and then back into the center of the doily and back out to the outside edge. So even if the pattern is tatted in one color, it still makes a big statement. So it, it's a wonderful design. Uh, my friend Serena Lynn from um, I Iowa, yeah, uh, she has tatted uh, a mouse. This is Gary and Randy Houts's uh, pattern, in, I think in one of their 3D uh, books. And the mouse is a little tiny mouse size, but Serena used uh, binding twine that's used to wrap bales of hay. So her mouse is the size of a cat. And then she's tatted another one of their patterns, which was a hedgehog. And in the hedgehog, she used jute. Uh, the, the little bitty hedgehog up front is what she did in class with tatting thread. So then she made her, made it again with a larger thread and it's almost life size. Many of you have probably seen the deco, deco pattern. And it's a little tiny version. It's probably about five inches long. Uh, but it looks like she used macrame cord in which to tat. So these these things make a statement. And so she's coming to tat days at uh, uh, 
here in Indiana in July, uh, Lisa's Catting Corners Tat Days. And so uh, we'll be, she said she's going to bring them so we can see them in person then. Proportion can create spatial, spatial perspective, helping items move forward or back into the space. To create the solution, you must bring in repetition and rhythm. The two go together. Once you start to repeat something, it automatically sets up a rhythm as your eye moves from element to element. To create that special, spatial look usually requires the use of gradation, which is repetition with the variance of size and or color. So imagine to yourself a picture of a fence heading back into the horizon. We usually perceive larger elements, in this case fence posts, as closer to us, while smaller elements seem farther away. My first try at gradation was this little heart motif. Uh, and it uses a reduction in double stitches in progressive rings and chains. So these are, you know, the larger ones and then it gradually gets smaller. And I used Victorian sets for my chains, reducing the number of sets within the chain. Uh, I think plain double stitches would have been a lot better. Let me scoot this up a little bit so you can see it. Uh, so I'll have to try that, try uh, substituting the Victorian chains with just a regular double stitch uh, and see how that works. I recently played with gradation again in tatting. Hopefully you can see that well. Scoot it over here. So um, this is called Whirlpool. And I started with a couple rounds of size 40 thread and then surrounded it by a round of size 20 thread and finished with a round of size 10 thread. And at first glance, it looks like a small, easy to do motif. And it is an easy to do motif. Um, but if you examine it closer, it almost draws your eye into the middle of the piece. This one I think was a, a little more successful. So as you look at it, it, it kind of draws you right into the center. Now I should have played around a little bit with color and maybe gone a little darker towards the center. So that might have to be another, another, uh, another day, another project. So. Repetition can almost guarantee a unified piece if it does not create a sense of monotony and boredom. By using repetition of similar rows of rings and chains, one sets up a pattern that can act as a transition from one area to another. If you design a doily and repeat a row several times, well, that's easy to tat. By adding a different, uh, a different ring and chain row in between every so many rows, it breaks up the rhythm and changes the look by varying the expected positive negative spaces. It adds interest. And so this, this doily, Um, starts with a ring and three rows of Catherine wheel chains, and then a couple rows of Mignonet style tatting, and then finishes with three more rows of Catherine wheel type chains. It has a variation of negative space in the Mignonet for interest. I don't believe I have published this pattern yet, and so I'll have to look for it first. So don't don't ask for don't ask for this pattern for quite some time because it's buried. Um, and uh, Harola even found this when she was working on her pretty doily. Uh, she alternated. Uh, she, she used that edging from our first class this session and then uh, alternated it with some other uh, rows of tatting. So she did a really good job on that. Um, this heart motif uses the repetition of rings in the same size, except for two of the rings. This one up here at the top and this one down here at the bottom are a little bit smaller, but all the rest are the same size. 
uh, same count of double stitches. Um, I've used this technique of repeating same size rings in other designs, and I've always been happiest with my designs that utilize uh, that sameness uh, throughout the piece. It just kind of holds everything together a little bit, a little bit better. Repetition does not always mean we're repeating the exact same element or collection of elements. A repetition of similar textures and colors throughout a piece also helps to unify the design. And so uh, I asked you all to bring insect pictures and uh, what we're going to do with those, and let me find my directions on that, we're going to create an edging and uh, we will examine our insect photos uh, and come up with a motif that we can repeat uh, and use as our edging. So I did this, let me switch back here. I, I did this for embroidery and I found it so interesting. I wanted to try it for, um, for tatting as well. So this was a class I took in at the Embroidery Guild from Pam Goderus. And she was, I had, it was a two day class in design. And so we took a, a picture of an insect and then we kind of made it cubic. We substituted all the little round areas for, uh, with, with triangles and squares and rectangles. And basically we were taking the insect out of the piece. And so once we got the insect uh, situated, then we had to use our L brackets to figure out what would make an interesting design. And so I ended up kind of utilizing this area here to come up with my motif down below. And so I'm using kind of like this waistband area of the dragonfly plus some negative space. And it came up with a motif. And then once I repeated it, I, I came out with an uh, interesting looking stitchable edge uh, that I haven't stitched yet, but I it's still on, on my bucket list to uh, try it out and see how it works out. But it looks, I don't think there'd be a problem with it, so. So I thought, well, we could try that. And I tried it with a couple different insects. So here's my yellow jacket. And I put my tracing paper on it. And I started going, and because we were gonna be doing uh, tatting with it, I thought, well, I'll, I'll do circles. I'll circle the different parts of the insect. Well, then once I was getting ready to put the to put my L brackets on it to isolate an area, it was it, it was too many too many circles. Some of these uh, probably should have been uh, traded out for some block tatting, so I may have to come back and, and retrace and rethink because I think a block tatted something or other could come out of this. But then I had to be a little more selective with the parts that I circled. And, and uh, so working with my tracing paper and my L brackets, I settled on this area up here by the head. So there it is drawn. Let me turn my insect over. And so I was just basically circling, I circled the two eyes part and the little head, head part. And then I circled some of these um, 
yellow stripes. And then, so once I put my L bracket on it, I thought, well, this, this has possibilities. So I came back and retraced, and instead of having those, these fun little folded ring type things, which would probably still make a, a fun edging as well, I went ahead and circled those. And, and um, so I came up with this design. which, and this was designed before we did the trees pattern, because this I'm thinking is gonna be similar to the trees, how the trees had, had the chains that came up and, and joined. So I haven't tatted it yet, but it's got possibilities. So if you've got a side view of your insect, you can trace the side view and then fold your piece in half and then duplicate the other side. So you don't have to trace, you don't have to have a head-on shot like this one is. This is a nice one because I've got both sides. So by folding your uh, tracing paper, you can get a repeat and see that, yes, this probably could work as an edging. So since this is the year of the cicadas, I thought I'd try it again. And I found a nice picture of a cicada. And put my tracing paper on top. And then with my L brackets, I started zeroing in on an area that looked like it might be, that it might make an interesting looking edging. And I ended up up here towards the head because I really liked how this kind of an M shape came down. And so it looks like there might be a couple of rings here, kind of an M shaped chain, a couple rings here, and I could, could put a, a ring down here in the center, and another ring up here at the top, so I ended up um, where did I put it? Let's see here, because I drew it out on To know. I drew it out on the computer. There it is. So let me get rid of the tracing paper so you can see what kind of area I'm looking at for this. And you may have to turn your turn your insect up and down or even upside down for you to find that area you're looking at. And this is what I came up with. So once you get it drawn out, then you have to figure out, well, how am I gonna tat this thing? So it had two rings down here and here, and then it has this M shape which will be our chain. And then we've got the two rings over here. And then here's my thrown off rings here in the center. So in order for me to actually tap this, I figured I'd have to do a regular ring here with a chain and then a split ring. And then I could take up with, a, with my M chain, add a couple of rings, M chain, and then I'd have to split ring again and chain back down here, and then it would repeat again. 
So um, I hope to have something for you for show and tell next next week. To because I never asked you to do anything I wouldn't do myself. So this is uh, this is my cicada edging. You might find as you're designing, you you might want something completely different in between your main edging that you're repeating. So I would say go back to your insect and see what else looks promising. So, so that's the cicada. Butterflies are always good. This one has all sorts of rings. And you could find all sorts of inspiration, just kind of moving your L brackets around. And then here is a longhorn beetle. And he had some, some interesting things going on. I turn him sideways. I love to look at this area here. At the very tip of his wing. So like I said, we're not tatting insects, but we're using them for inspiration uh, as we design our, our tatting designs. So let me look back, back here and see if there are any questions. And do you have any questions? So your directions, uh, your homework directions tell you how I did this. And then uh, for extra credit, you could des uh, decide how you would uh, turn a corner. Let me get back here to me. And uh, you wouldn't have to tap very much of it, just, just do a little representation. Uh, and send it into the homework. We'd love to. We'd love to see it. Okay. Are there any questions about proportion or or repetition? I'm I'm glad I kind of piqued your interests. Next time we'll be talking a little bit about dominance. Uh, it'll also repeat some of what, what I went over today. I almost did the two together, but it was there were, I was coming on uh, too much information. So the homework assignments are under the uh, 2021 lesson logs. Uh, and there's a link to them in the email I sent out. Yes, Laurel, everything, it, pretty much everything has a shape of some sort, so. And we can get inspiration from many, many areas. <laughs> Thank you, Corrine. Yeah, I'm, my background is uh, math-based, so um, whenever I have trouble coming up with a design, I start brushing my teeth with my left hand to kind of work the creative side of my brain. So I'm a little ambidextrous, so. Yeah, Cynthia, we can, we can uh, connect a little bit later if you, you didn't find the connection, so didn't find the link. Yeah, the uh, homework needs to be sent to me uh, actually at the online tatting class, and it'll get to me. And then uh, I check it to make sure you're on the right track. And um, I think Melissa sent me some ideas because she was having trouble cutting out circles, and so she made herself a cheat sheet of circles that she could copy onto her uh, colored paper. Well, thank you, Robin. Glad you enjoyed it.
So in, if you want to make the um, color wheel, there's 12 motifs there. So you would get 12 entries into our, our homework competition if you finish the entire uh, color wheel. So. Well, thank you for coming and happy tatting.